let's talk about the electrophilic addition mechanism. And this is going to focus on when we're adding strong Bronsted acids to alkenes. So let's just simply draw, start by drawing the reaction that would happen, and then we can talk about the mechanism. So we'll start off with a cyclohexene, and we'll just add one of our favorite strong acids over this double bond. And in this case, we will add a proton somewhere uh, to one of the carbons that had the double bond, and we'll add a chlorine to the other. So that's the product. Now let's just talk about the mechanism of how this works and how you draw it. So we start off with this. Now our proton is the electrophile. This is something that desires electrons, right? The chlorine is stealing them from it a little bit. So this typically gets drawn just from the middle of the bond here because it's those pi electrons reacting. And we'll just have that go off and pick up the proton. And then we'll have the chloride uh, leave. Now, this process is the slow step, the electrophilic addition. And the reason for that is we're making a high energy intermediate. So let's just look at the intermediate here and we'll be able to see. So we have added our proton and we just pick one, it's a symmetrical molecule. But you'll notice that now we have a carbocation. Now this is a secondary carbocation, but it's still a higher energy um, situation, intermediate, because we have a charged species. So the next step, coordination, is going to be rather quick when our chloride that gets formed when the hydrogen breaks apart, the hydrogen chloride breaks apart, it's going to just coordinate with that plus charge. That will form our product. It's really just a two-step mechanism with a carbocation intermediate. Now, these reactions tend to be energetically favorable because we've traded a, the breaking of a pi bond for the making of a sigma bond. Right? We've broken a sigma bond here, but we get another one back over here. We break a pi bond there, we get a sigma bond here. Remember how sigma bonds are typically stronger than pi bonds, and so this tends to be an energetically favored reaction. Hydrogen chlorides are not the only thing that could react. So let's look at this uh, using sulfuric acid. Let's just see what the product would be of this. Again, this is a symmetrical molecule, so we're going to just stick the substituted uh, portion where we want. Of course, on one of the carbons that had the double bond. And we'll have the hydrogen sticking over on the other one and we've added that to the double bond. Now, you may be looking at this and say, hmm, I wonder if benzene reacts. It's got several double bonds in it. So let's just address that very quickly here. If we were to add some acid to benzene like this, will typically get no reaction. And that's simply because this ring 
has a resonance stabilization, right? So these double bonds can move around the ring. And it's, furthermore, it's aromatic. We'll talk about that more a little bit later, but suffice it to say for now, this is a very stable um, configuration. So in this situation, we're going to get no reaction. Now, we can have molecules that contain uh, benzene rings, but still have a reaction. It just won't happen on the benzene ring. So if instead we had this, this double bond right here could have a reaction. Right? So if I do, again, just some acid HX, since I've chosen a symmetrical molecule, we can just substitute where we want. And this will leave the, the benzenes, or this aromatic ring, untouched, but it will substitute over this bond, even though this is part of the extended pi system here. So that's a little bit about the electrophilic mechanism when we're adding a strong Bronsted acid to an alkene.